Hello, and welcome to Let Me Tell You a Story podcast, produced by ED Media. Today's story is from the best-selling novel, Cabin Love, Letters of Fate, a love story, written by Latoya Monique Warren. Chapter Break A red pickup truck rolled up behind me and took me out my thoughts as I sat parked in the driveway. It was Mr. Willis the groundskeeper for the cabin. He came by to make sure all the electricity and plumbing worked. He always made sure we had no issues, I met him our last visit to the cabin when the lights went out, and he came in and fixed them so fast I didn't know he left. Wolf gives him great tips for coming by, but beside the pay, he is always very efficient on his checkups. Hey Miss Lady, glad to see again Mr. Willis said as he came up to my side of my SUV. Is Wolf around? Not yet Mr. Willis, he's on his way though, I said. Oh, okay well I'm going to go in and check out everything, hopefully he's here but before I go I want to make sure you guys have a safe stay with no worries, he said with a slight smile. And we are grateful for that always Mr. Willis, I just got here a few minutes ago and my bags are still in the back, do you mind taking them in for me, I asked. Anything for a beautiful woman as you. He smiled while tipping his cowboy hat that covered the bald spot in the middle of his head. I jumped out of the truck and took in the fresh air, it was in the 60s this time of year and it smelled like springtime, but the temperature dropped in the 30s at night in these parts. I had my camera in tow and started taking pictures of the beautiful scenery before me. I went into our bedroom where Mr. Willis placed my bags and started unpacking. Each time that I walked into the cabin I was reminded two things one that a man cares enough for me to create such beauty and two I was being deceitful to my life as I knew it. I looked around the cabin feeling bittersweet knowing that this would be my last time here. Thoughts of other women coming into this place and enjoying its pleasures made my stomach hurt some. It was my choice, I started this and I had to finish it. I didn't want to leave Wolf, I loved him but I couldn't go on living life like this. I had a daughter to think about and although I would give my life for Cheyenne, the hungry sexual appetite I had for Wolf seemed to overpower that in a sad way. How can something that feels so right, be so wrong? I needed a drink so I went to the bar and poured a glass of coconut vodka, with some pineapple juice to help my thoughts. Once Mr. Willis left, I gave him a tip and he assured me that Maria, the cleaning lady, will be here in the morning to give the cabin a thorough cleaning. She was supposed to come yesterday, but she had a family emergency. He also assured me that the delivery of food and other things that Wolf ordered should arrive shortly at the cabin and for me to not get alarmed if a car rolls up. By this time Wolf still didn't make it there so I decided to take a hot shower and relax on the bed until he arrived. Chapter Break Hours later I felt kisses on my face as I was coming out of my sleep. When I opened up my eyes it was Wolf bent over me, looking like some new money. I smiled, and kissed him passionately. Hey baby girl, Wolf said all the while looking me in my eyes and rubbing my hair. You smell good. Thanks baby, what time is it? I asked confused at the loss of time since I went to sleep. It's a little after seven. And you're just getting here? I asked. Now baby girl, I've been here for a while, but when I came in and saw you sleeping, I let you sleep. You looked so beautiful laying there I didn't want to disturb you so I went and started watching the game, Wolf said with a warm smile. I sat up and looked at Wolf, he was so handsome. He always had a fresh haircut, and I never seen him wear the same outfit twice since we met, his hands and feet are always manicured. He took good care of himself. His goatee was so sexy and skin was so smooth. I wasn't a flashy dresser like Wolf was, but when it was time to go out I pulled myself together pretty well. I put my feet on Wolf and he started rubbing my feet and legs it felt like heaven. Have I ever told you that you have the prettiest feet and legs I have ever seen on a woman lace? He asked seductively. Every time you see them, I blushed. Wolf was fully dressed with a crisp pair of jeans on and a polo shirt but his sneakers were off his socks were crisp white, he jumped on the side of me and held me so tight, talk to me baby girl, he said as he kissed my cheek. I turned to him and started to rub his hair, I took in every detail of his face his eyebrows were thick and his eyelashes were longer than most women I knew. His lips were full and his nose was straight like a white man's but broader. His cocoa brown skin was flawless, he had high cheekbones and his face came to a point, that's where his strong features come from. I sketched my index finger around his whole face, he closed his eyes. 
Wolf took that same finger and started sucking on it. I started smiling. You trying to read my mind lace, Wolf asked with a smile on his face. Why you ask that? I said. I don't know, it seems like every time you do that it's like you are deep thought about me, trying to figure out my thoughts, Wolf said. No Wolf just thinking, thinking about us, I said sadly without realizing. Wolf gently grabbed my chin for me to look him in the eyes. Lace, listen baby girl, we good right? I haven't felt this way for a woman in a long time. You know I want all of you, but you know it's not my place to make that happen. You are the one in the situation so as a man I have to play my position. I don't like being with you like this, but I understand that this is the only way I can have you, so I would rather have some of you than none of you. My stomach felt like it did a backflip. I was looking in this man's eyes and feeling every word he spoke to me along with the guilt of my decision to let him go by the end of this weekend. Your eyes look sad lace, something you want to talk about, you know you can tell me anything? Wolf asked me. No baby, I'm good why you don't start running the jacuzzi so we can get in and have some fun, I sat up and Wolf was now over me like he was doing push-ups. He licked my lips and it sent shock waves through my body. Now you see that's what I love about you lace. You love to fuck and you're so damn sexy about it, he said causing me to blush. Wolf and I sat in the jacuzzi with our drinks in our hands as I filled him in on Mr. Willis coming by and about when Maria was coming by also. I sat in front of Wolf and felt his dick rising minute after minute. He was kissing my neck now, and we began to fuck like rabbits in the jacuzzi. As I was coming out the bathroom from moisturizing and putting on my t-shirt and panties Wolf was on the phone, I saw him go to the front door open at the cold air rip through the cabin and gave me a chill. I walked into the kitchen and Wolf was on the phone while taking plastic out of the bags and putting food on the prettiest ceramic plates I ever saw. Wolf blew me a kiss, and I caught it in the air and he smiled and shook his head. The cabin was really warm, Wolf hung up the phone came over and kissed me on the lips, eat up baby girl, we worked up an appetite, Wolf winked. Where did this food come from? I asked looking surprised. You know I have connections baby girl, it just took a phone call, and you know your boy got skills like that, Wolf laughed, and as always he never misses a beat, it was my favorite fresh salmon, steamed broccoli, with seasoned red potatoes. No but for real Wolf, it's nothing in these parts for miles, who the hell brought us hot food at night up here? I asked curiously. Well if you need to know girl, Mr. Willis' wife made this especially for us. When I told him we were coming he asked if it was anything additional he can do, and he always brags how good of cook his wife is so I put the order in then and he assured me that he would have someone drop it off to us for dinner, and as you can see he is a man of his word, he said. I looked at Wolf with a smirk of pleasure, I was thinking this man never ceased to amaze me. Okay then Mr. Wonderful what is it, that you can't do? I asked with a smile and my fork full of salmon. Have the woman that I adore exclusively, he said in all seriousness. My heart thumped at that moment, I saw sadness in him that I haven't seen before, that's not funny Wolf. I didn't say it to be funny, you asked me a question and I answered it. I got up and went over to sit on his lap, he was angry but couldn't resist my love for him. I started to kiss him all over his face, he closed his eyes. You know, you are special to me Wolf. We're like soulmates that met at the wrong time is all. I said as laid his head on my chest. I love the smell of you lace, he said, making me smile. We left that subject and finished up the food, it was incredible. I went to the bedroom to call Shy and, and Bradley. Wolf gave me my space, he knew if I was on the phone it was either a client or Bradley so with that understanding he never invaded my space. How's mama's big girl doing tonight? I asked Shy and with excitement. It's really fun mommy. I won all the games of Uno, Cheyenne said. I'm sure that you did Shy, you're the best Uno player I know, I said with pride. Yes, I am mommy she said confidently. When will I see you again mommy? Well in two days we will meet up again and how about we get your favorite ice cream cone from the parlor on Justin Street, I answered. Yes, my favorite, okay mommy we are going to watch a movie now I love you. I love you too baby, I will call you tomorrow. Bradley and I said good night and I hung up the phone with deep sadness in my heart. I was here with a man that made everything seem perfect, yet I wasn't being honest to anyone at this point. Wolf and I agreed on these terms of secret escapades, 
and now I was ending it because I wanted to get my life back in order. It seemed so unfair to him, but I am engaged and seemed unfair to lead Bradley on and marry him when I wasn't in love with him. I needed a drink fast, when I went to the game room Wolf already had my drink made as if he could read my thoughts. I drank it down within seconds. Everything okay? He asked with a corona in his hands. Yeah, everything is fine baby, just a lot of things coming up with work is all, I stated dryly. After several more drinks, Wolf and I was completely naked laying the California King plush bed that felt like heaven. I was lying on his chest and he was running his finger through my hair. I never felt so complete in my life. Lace I want to talk to you about something said Wolf in a serious tone. Okay, shoot I'm all ears, I said. What is this we doing, and how long are we going to continue to do it? Wolf asked. I raised my head and felt sick by his question, I didn't want to talk about this right now I didn't want to deal with the hard stuff. I just want to lie in his arms and feel safe. Wolf we talked about this baby, it's complicated, you know that, I didn't know we was going to get to this point, I mean it's just so complicated. Wolf took a deep breath, this isn't about sex to me anymore Lace, it's not. I care for you I do. We are cheating ourselves living this way. I mean I enjoy it, but I want more baby. I can give you the world, you know I can. Wolf I know what you can do baby but this isn't about you and I. I have my daughter to think about, you know this. Bradley is the only father she ever knew how can I take that away from her now? I mean what if I leave Bradley and you and I don't work, then I would drag my child through hell, and I'm not ready to do that to her wolf, just give me some more time to figure things out please. Wolf didn't respond to me, he just continued to rub my hair. I knew his silence was a sign of his pain. I felt even worse at this point. Tears welled up in my eyes I was torn and hurting. I deserve this pain because of my choices. But everyone I love I am hurting them. I had to end this with Wolf it was the only way to mend these broken pieces. We fell asleep peacefully.